I'll start this Board of Supervisors on January the 15th, 2019. Roll call, please. Leland? Here. Schwartz? Here. Trelka? White? Here. Little? Here. Mr. Trelka is at uh, jury duty, I believe. Okay, moving on to would you please join us in a moment of silence? <clears throat> They join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, moving on to item one is agenda received as proposed or amended. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments for the agenda? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item two is public comments. Anybody like to address the board at this time? It's not an agenda item. Please state your name and address. My name is Dwayne Eilers. I live at 1205 Bishop Street in Waterloo. I was here when you guys were preparing to sell the county home. My wife's worked out there 24 years and she's over 60 and it's very hard for her to find another job. Her salary went from $16 an hour down to 12. She lost half her vacation, all of her insurance, and her insurance went from what she was paying 300 a month to 900 plus to 1,000. So her $500 a week salary has now gone to 250 maybe $200 a week. And I don't think it was handled properly, being that the county had a second bid that was better than what they sold it for if you deduct the money you set aside. But the problem is not that. The problem is my wife. She can't go get another job someplace else. It's hard on the people that have stayed there, like you had mentioned before, 25, 30, 40 years, to be able to lose. She lost 25% of her wages. She lost all of her vacation time. You gotta work there over a year before you qualify for a vacation. You lost half of the, all or all of the sick leave time and none of the other benefits that the county produced before. So my wife's salary is going to go from basically 500 a week down to 200 or 250 a week take home pay. By the time she pays for this $1,000 a month insurance. Now I'm a disabled veteran, which has nothing to do with it at all. I work every day. I have a small business that I run, and I'm 77 years old. So the thing is, what's left? What's left for my wife after working 23 years with the county? And I don't think you guys fully understood what the the new buyers are doing. And. Is there already a word out that they're going to reduce the staff that's already there by 25%? So I just wanted you to know what's happening to me, and I don't know about the rest of the people that are out there. Some of them are there, some of them are left, and I think there was 10 positions that was uh, eliminated. So I appreciate you guys listening to me. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Okay, is there anybody else like to address the board at this time? <clears throat> okay, then moving on to item three, which is claims and payments, resolution A. 
Susan? The county's expenditures this week total $469,704.11, Motion to approve. Second. Any questions or comments on the bills? Roll call, please. Leyland? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. White? Yes. Little? Yes. And item B. Country Views expenditures um, this week total $167,469.19, This is This should be the majority of the uh, December, uh, prior to December expenses. We still have a few more. I've had a few more invoices, but uh, it should start being a much uh, lesser amount um, for the next few weeks. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? Move to approve. Second. <coughs> Roll call. Schwartz? Yes. White? Yes. Leland? Yes. Little? Yes. Okay, moving on to item four. This is receiving project updates from <coughs> department heads and or elected officials. Morning, Kathy. Good morning, board. Kathy morning. Nicholas. Uh, the roads, the paved road system is, of course, slick this morning. Mm -hmm. In many spots, our trucks have been out sanding and salting on the roads. They've probably gone back in by now. Uh, but we do expect conditions to improve as the day goes on. The gravel roads are in pretty decent shape. There's a blanket of snow between the, the aggregate and the thin layer. <coughs> so if you're traveling a reasonable speed, you should have um, no problems on the gravel road system. Just another reminder that if you are interested in the statewide road conditions that the 511 website has a really good graphical map of the road conditions throughout the, the state and these would be the DOT roads that I'm speaking of. But if you're traveling statewide that's a good place to look. And then you can also call 511. It's a toll free number and then you just uh, input the route that you are traveling on and then you can find out the road conditions. So. Those are two good sources for traveling in winter conditions. Can I answer any questions? Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Hey, is there anybody else? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to item five. This is minutes approved for January 8th, 2019. So, a second. Any questions? I'm sorry, who moved that? I did. Okay, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item six is a consent agenda that's being made by a single resolution. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions, comments on the consent? Roll call, please. Aye. Yes. Leland? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Little? Yes. Okay, moving on to item seven, item seven is contracts and agreements. This is a resolution of the Title VI agreement between Blackhawk County and now Department of Transportation naming Dead Bunger um, Human Resource Director as des designated Title VI Coordinator. Kathy, I think you've got this one and the next one, and then you, even the third one, why don't you just briefly talk about it? Sure, I'll talk about the first two. So as part of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, we agree that we will not, as a condition of receiving federal funds, we as a government agency will not discriminate on the grounds of race, color, or national origin. We will not exclude from participation in or deny benefits to, to people as a condition of receiving federal aid. We do, of course, receive federal aid in the form of f money from the U.S. Department of Transportation. That's usually coming from the Federal Highway Administration. We routinely receive federal aid at least once a year uh, for bridge money, bridge projects specifically, as well as some of our regional projects throughout the county here. This agreement set the assurances, excuse me, says that we agree we will comply with those with the law. The agreement uh, is a bit more specific. It gives local agencies more guidance on how to interpret that, how we implement it. If we need to make any changes to be in compliance with that, we should once a year take a look at our agreement. We also add the chair's name to this agreement and that's really the gist of those two items that we're in compliance with the federal law. And this isn't anything new, don't we do this yearly or no? Yes, we do this uh, once a year and usually add the chair's name and okay. the HR director is the really the um, 
person in charge of this with the county. Okay. <clears throat> Has anybody got any questions on this, on item A? Oh. Move to approve. Second. Okay, roll call. Leland? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. White? Yes. Little? Yes. And item B, resolution. Anybody got any questions on this one? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Schwartz? Yes. White? Yes. Leland? Yes. Little? Yes. Okay, item C is this agreement between Blackhawk County and the Iowa Department of Transportation. This is the Traffic Safety Improvement Program. Kathy? Yeah, so uh, in December, the Iowa Transportation Commission did vote on a number of projects to receive state uh, transportation safety improvement money. Our project, our additional work on uh, Cedar Wapsie Road paving, which will take place this summer, was approved. And I've mentioned before that what we'll be doing is placing a wider shoulder, putting a six inch pavement marking along the edge line as well as the center line versus a four inch pavement marking. And we'll also place a shoulder line rumble strip. So that paving project will take place this summer with those improvements. We do think it will result in a safer roadway in the future. Move to approve. Second. Okay, any questions on this one? Okay, roll call please. Schwartz? Yes. White? Yes. Leland? Yes. Little? Yes. Okay, moving on to item eight. <clears throat> this is other business. Uh, the next three are motions um, changing uh, some wording in some of our policies that we went through. The first one, A, is open records policy, implementing the provisions of the Iowa Code Chapter 22, and it talks about providing assistance to citizens and so forth. Deb, did you want to talk about any of these? More or less just tweaking some of them. Right, Warren Gordon, Debbie Bunger, HR Director. So the first one is actually a new policy that just came up as a recommendation from our property and liability insurance that we have a policy to cover this. So um, we, we developed that as a committee. So we're recommending that you adopt a, this policy and then the other two are just basically minor tweaks. Okay. Do we have any questions on this one? <laughs> Move to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item B. So moved. Second. Any questions on this one? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And the last one is um, motion at the revision to the conflicts of interest policy providing a general form for employees. Debbie, could you address what this specifically changed? Yeah, sorry, this one is actually a little bit more than a minor tweak. Um, we decided to add, uh, we had a the health department had actually asked for a form. They had a situation come up where they wanted uh, their employee to fill out a form and we didn't actually have one. So we started looking at what other counties were doing. We got copies of their policies. In reviewing uh, Lynn counties, we particularly like their uh, the model that they used, and so fundamentally the policy is the same. We just restructured it a little bit, and then we added forms, and then so there's a basic general form for all employees, and then there's one specific to the health department. Okay. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Debbie, I did have a question a couple of weeks ago. We talked about the sick leave policy. And the policy review committee was going to get together in January. Has that been done yet? So this month, with uh, all the implementing of all the final paperwork for country view, has been pretty busy for our office. Um, and then we're still working on contract negotiations. So we, I just actually, uh, Supervisor Schwartz just sent an email. We're trying to get something going the first part of February. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item nine. This is a work session discussion. This is an update on Veteran Affairs Office presented by Kevin Dill, Veteran Affairs Director. Okay, <laughs> Kevin, is this just overall update or we're gonna talk about the employees that you're moving or whatever? I understand you've been working with Amanda too on that. Yes, sir. So maybe 
Amanda, did she walk in? Yep. You want to kind of give brief overview first, and then Kevin can go into his. And what? Morning. 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 All right. Um, so yeah, like you said, um, well, let me just start. Uh, so Kevin brought to our office a potential reclassification of some uh, current positions with the VA office. And um, so just to give you an idea, sorry, I just kind of ran up here, so I'm a little out of breath. Um, but when we look at reclassifications, when we get these kind of requests from department heads, um, just to define what a reclassification is, it is an assignment of a new job title and or pay grade to an existing position. Uh, so we go through our process when we get this kind of request. We evaluate duties, responsibilities, and minimum qualifications of that position, and that's how we determine if a reclass is needed or warranted. Um, the evaluation may result in an upward or downward move or no change at all in the pay grade of that position. Um, and uh, basically, what I've been doing with Kevin and or any other department head that would re request this kind of reclass is um, I really try to understand what's changed in the job duties. So we really focus on essential duties. So um, looking at uh, what is that position's purpose? Has that purpose changed? Um, and that's kind of what goes into our scoring in order to maintain internal equity um, throughout the county, um, looking at other positions. Um, and uh, there are other things such as marginal duties, but those aren't uh, the duties that we're really focusing on um, that have changed that would warrant a uh, reclassification. So just kind of wanted to outline that for you. Our general rule of thumb when it comes to reclasses is that uh, the job duties, duties should be changing by about 30% in order for that reclass to be, um, to occur, to either a higher or lower pay grade. Generally, this can take about anywhere from three to four weeks, so it's been kind of um, scaled down quite a bit. Uh, I think I had, Kevin first came to me about two weeks ago um, with this concept, and um, so we've done a lot of work for two positions in a short amount of time. Um, it's not completed yet, so um, I would like a little bit more time to formulate um, a recommendation to the board. But, um, but yeah, just one quick note though about reclassifications, work volume and job performance is not something that we justify reclasses for. Um, and what I mean by that is that an increase in the volume of the work being performed um, may actually involve us looking at having an additional FTE of the same job, but not necessarily reclassing that position. And then performance, of course, is based upon are we rewarding those employees with merit increases or by their collective bargaining agreement. So, so that is just a brief overview. Do you have any questions at all about the kind of process? And one position is not bargaining and the other position is bargaining? Right, so we have an intake officer that we're looking at, which is part of the unit one um, bargaining agreement. Um, that one is a little different. Uh, the current collective bargaining agreement through the end of this fiscal year says that we do have to go to the union if the employer does um, add a new job classification, which would be a new job title, um, part of a pay grade, or part of an existing pay grade. But um, we have to give the union notice. They have to have the opportunity to bargain for wages or other allowable benefits. Um, and then yes, the other one is the, uh, currently it's a service officer, veteran service officer, and looking at that possibly being a senior uh, veteran service officer. So. Hey, board, got you any questions? Well, like one yeah. or uh, a little more time to finish this or complete it. Do you think uh, another week or two, or what are you looking at again? I think I could have it ready for you guys by next week. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm close with it, but I'd like to just um, to make sure my evaluation is uh, fair and that I'm not rushed through it. Um, I would like one more week to just kind of look at it to be able to recommend something to the board. So, um, one other note, um, we have seen with other autonomous boards that um, they have you know, set 
their their staff members' salaries at a certain pay rate. Um, you know, they are able to do that under their autonomous rights. Um, but we still typically do see that that pay rate that they're setting is, even if it's not part of our general services pay scale, it's um, or it's not actually on our pay scale. It's within that range. So we're we're still working with them. Yes, we recognize they have that ability, but um, to still respect for internal equity purposes and to not show favoritism, things like that, uh, that they generally keep that in the same pay range. But like, I know conservation has done it in the past, um, although we've seen a trend to them coming back to our GS scale. Um, county social services have pulled some off, but one thing to keep in mind is that um, you know, across the boards come around, that's up to their board to determine. They aren't part of this board's decision when it comes to um, pay increases or things like that. But um, since the VA Commission is an autonomous board, that's just one thing I did want to point out. So, okay. any other questions or anything? Anybody else, board? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for working on that. Kevin? I'm still here. <laughs> Good morning. Um, yeah, there was uh, just a couple of things I wanted to bring to you before I leave. Um, I wanted to come talk to you one last time. Um, and thank you uh, for letting me serve the last three years. I appreciate that. I, I think you know that, um, I think most people know that the office we inherited was a little dysfunctional. Um, and uh, I shared with you some numbers over the last three years, but um, they're just numbers. Um, those numbers don't measure our our compassion and our devotion. It doesn't measure our wit. It doesn't measure what we've done for the veterans of this community. It doesn't measure uh, veterans like Burl Buck, who Craig used to sit with in his last days at a hospice. It doesn't measure um, when his wife called and the VA was going to take away the benefit because he passed away and the benefit passed away with him and the countless hours that Michelle and Stacy and I spend on medical and legal research and convincing the medical examiner to amend the death certificate so his wife can get that benefit. Um, and the, the joy you feel when she calls and she doesn't have to be kicked out of her independent living facility uh, because now she's getting that benefit. Those numbers don't. That doesn't measure those things. Um, so there's some, some things I, I didn't get to accomplish in my time here. Um, the Vet Center that we've talked about before. Um, reclassifying Michelle and Stacy. I think in the past the VA office was kind of just an island on its own, kind of hidden from you all. And I tried to open that up to see exactly what it is that we do. I think Amanda will tell you that she was pretty surprised at the amount of work that Michelle and Stacy and even if it wasn't them, their positions do in our office. Um, I've also learned in recently um, that our, you know, our, our life on this planet is too short, uh, that the work is too great. Um, you know, and someday we'll all be judged. And as the years pass, and I think about myself as my life is now coming to an end um, of the efforts that I've made and that our office has made in righting some of the wrongs that might have been going on in the office before, um, seeing the pain and the crying and the suffering of some of our veterans and trying to heal it, um, seeing the veterans commit suicide and trying to stop it. Um, when I was a kid, um, I grew up in a family where it's pretty well known in the mental health uh, field about my mother here in this community. Um, my mother tortured me for about 15 years. She was a homicidal, suicidal, schizophrenic here in Blackhawk County. And uh, I used to uh, sleep in a church when I was a kid to escape her or in a hole in a field or in a tree or pounding on somebody's house, let me stay the night. And uh, just needing a place to go. And uh, so about after about 15 years of that torture that no child should suffer through, I finally just ran away and I never came back. 
And so I think about our vet center in that way, just a place for our veterans to go to get some peace and quiet, a place to get some hope. Um, times are changing. Um, our young veterans today uh, aren't like our older veterans. Uh, they don't look at brick and mortar. Um, they come together on, on how to help each other, uh, assimilate back into the community. Um, but I look at that both ways. The Vet Center could do that for our young vets, but also a bridge to our veteran service groups in the Cedar Valley that we can all work together to increase the memberships of our veteran service groups and at the same time provide a place for those guys and gals to come and find some hope and healing. Um, so that was one thing I didn't get to accomplish that I hope that you guys can look at today. You know, we can choose to do nothing. We can choose to continue to run the office as it is, which it's a good thing. Or hopefully the, the commission will not pick a VA director, will take us backwards. But I don't think that's the road that history has marked out for us. Um, there's so much more that this uh, office can do in this county, so much more. And I shared that with Amanda the other day when she came to visit with us and see what it is that we do. Um, our office is more than just those numbers. It's, um, it's sitting with a widow and holding her hand as she cries because she just lost her husband to coming out from your desk and putting her arm around a veteran as he's struggling with the wounds of war, deciding whether or not he wants to breathe again. Um, or it's seeing a child come into the office with a smile that can light a room because he took his money that he made from doing chores and instead of buying a toy, he went to Walmart and bought cans of corn and beans to give to a veteran who was hungry. Those are the things that we do. This community is hungry to do more for veterans. It is crying out to do more, and it wants to do this vet center. It really won't cost you anything, um, just a place. We have a family that wants to give $35,000. We have organizations around town that want to come and help with whatever way they can. A community that wants to write checks um, because they want to get involved. So um, I hope that, um, that you allow the vet center to come to fruition and we can use that first floor over the Pinecrest building. Um, like I said, it really won't cost you anything. It just, it'll save somebody's life one day. Um, as far as the classifications, I think Amanda did a good job. I think her eyes were enlightened and opened. Um, I think that um, um, people will see now what exactly is that we do at that office. Um, I think it's funny sometimes that I joke with Stacy that whenever I get an email with all the department heads about things going on, Stacy's name's always on it. And so we, we treat her as almost a deputy director of the VA office, but we, we don't pay her like one. And uh, her job doesn't stay that. And Michelle the same way. Michelle and the countless hours she spends on legal and medical research and the things that she does, um, this county never knew because it was hidden because in the past they hid it from you all. Um, so the Vet Center, please do that for our veterans. They, they need that. The community wants it. Like I said, it really won't cost you a dime. Um, and the job classifications, reward them for what they do. Um, they give so much to our community and, and uh, they deserve it. Um, so I hope you do that. I, every day we improve the quality of the lives of our veterans in this community and sometimes I look over at Stacy and Michelle and I think, how do I improve the quality of your life? Well, we provide it by having a good office where they come and have fun and enjoy um, working on people's lives, but I'd like to reward them for what they do and change their job classification and represent the pay that I think not only they deserve, but whoever takes their place, because they'll be doing the same thing as long as we hire the right person. <laughs> oh, um, but thanks for uh, letting me come talk to you one last time. Hey, not going to be mean today. Just hey. going to, uh, it's funny when you uh, get to the end of your life. Like for me, um, kind of. 
Thank you, Kevin, but this isn't going to be hopefully the last time we see you here today. I think we probably would like to recognize your efforts and things, too. Um, obviously, you've put a spotlight on us from the state's point of view. People talk about your office and what you do for them, as well as the veterans, like you said, helping them and their families. Sure. So yeah, I can't it's, um, thank you enough for that. Uh, a lady, one of the things I wanted to accomplish when I took over and I sat in, in Benny's old chair and I looked out and thought, what, what do we want to do? And one of the things I wanted to do was that our office would be a model to this state. And uh, a lady, a VA director in another county, sent the stats we did out to the whole state. And she said, this is what we should model after. So that was one good thing we got to accomplish that they do. Des Moines talks about us. The White House even talked about us. This little county in Iowa talked about our office. And um, so there's more that we can do. Um, Tom and Craig, I, I don't have to tell you. Um, as the VA director, the 9,000 veterans fell under my command. They fall under your command. You're in charge. And we take care of our men and we take care of our women. And you guys know that. I don't have to tell you that. Um, and one way we can do that is just can make us a place to have a vet center for veterans to go and reward the people in our office. I would ask for that. So thanks. That's what thank you, Kevin, thank for you very much. Just extraordinary service to this this community. Um, and to say that the veteran center is, is absolutely needed and it needs to happen this year. And that's that's my promise to you and the, to this community that um, it has to be in this year's budget. There's just no other question. And, like, and I appreciate that, Chris. And like I said, you, you'd be surprised that uh, I really don't think it'll cost you anything. Uh, I think the members of this community who are just dying to do something will cover that cost. Mm -hmm. I really believe they will. Uh, the members of this community have been outstanding for our veterans, and they want to do more. So we just need a place, and we have a place. Yep. If you're willing to give that up and um, lose a little revenue from the state if they want those offices, but what does that cost just to save one life, just one life? We'll save, yeah. I think we'll save more than that, Kevin. I think we have saved more than that over your you have. period of time on the board as, yes. a, as a VA commission. Like you said, uh, the only thing I, I disagree with what you said is, and not a, to you, but uh, a, vet, a vet my age still has another guy's back. You know, we're, we're, all, we're all in this together. And like Chris said, this is much needed. This, this center out there will help a lot of veterans. You would help me and you. Yeah, I agree with you, Craig. I, and one of the things if uh, I didn't bring up is I think we need one more person. I think the future for the the state is going to do away with county service officers in the state, and they're going to regionalize it, and mm -hmm. Blackhawk County is going to be one of those hubs. And my vision for that vet center was to hire one more person because I do believe that the veteran service groups, like the Evansdale Land Vets and the Legions and the VFWs, do serve a purpose. And that person would be uh, the go between between the younger veterans and you guys through that vet center and bring you guys together and help increase your membership. Um, I still believe in that. And I think if we could just hopefully maybe next fiscal year we could hire one more person to help do that and help run the center. So. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And just one thing, since Kevin did bring up that other position, um, so uh, right now he was looking at having an additional uh, VSO officer, so that would be increasing that by an additional FT. We do have an existing job description. If that's changed, if you're looking at something that's um, a little bit different, then we would do the same process um, if it was going to be something outside of what we already have. So what we're looking at is uh, looking at reclassifying the intake officer, the bargaining position, the um, Michelle's current position, which is a VSO, to a senior VSO, which is in the non-bargaining, and then the impacts of having an additional uh, veteran service officer. So that's just to kind of recap um, what our office is looking at and um, what we've been verifying uh, through our process. With so you're going to come back to the board in a week or two? Yeah. So I will try to come back um, next week to have something for you to see you know, if it's changed to a significant um, level to warrant reclassifications. Um, the bargaining unit will have to, if that is the case where we've come and we've decided that that is a merited reclass, then um, the actual wage will really kind of be up to that negotiation with the union. Uh, Deb, that is that contract 
been finished or are we working on that one right now? Oh, in the negotiations, we have a, a tentative agreement. The, the unit hasn't actually ratified it yet. So, so there's still some options of talking. But we've met with them and we've come to a tentative agreement. So, okay. but we but we could still do this. I mean, okay. outside of that process. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for uh, working with them, Amanda and Kevin. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else? I, I'd like to add to it. Sure. Please. I'm Heidi Warrington. I'm one of the five commissioners with the uh, Blackhawk County Veterans Administration Commission. I'm also recently retired um, Army psychiatric nurse practitioner. One of the critical issues that is undermet in our community that I think is to the desperate level is the shortage of mental health um, intake, direction, and the veterans are in dire need of it even more than our general public. And currently, because there's no vet centers there, there's not even a private room for someone like myself to give one-on-one -on -one, um, counseling other than just the staff that exists with compassion and love in their heart. In order to have a um, licensed professional, whether they volunteer or um, somebody's on the staff in the building, there needs to be a facility, a, a private room for counseling and to render help in order for veterans to feel comfortable coming in and also for the comfort of the staff. I'd like to echo the fact that <clears throat> I've been working with the governor to look at Black Hawk County as one of the regional hubs um, in case they go forward with the plan, similar to the mental health hubs. There, I believe there's 12 in Iowa. Instead of having 99 offices everywhere, to have regional um, offices in Black Hawk County has always, in her mind, been an attractive location for one of those. And they can address that this year, do you know? Well, it, the governor indicated they would, but we've also heard that this may be a two or three year process from start to finish because there's much more than Black Hawk County in, involved in this. And there's, um, but it may very well move forward this year. Yeah. Um, from the indication she gave, I had two different meetings with her. Um, in the fall, we're, we're waiting to go back another time now and kind of talk about some of the nuts and bolts. But we need to posture Black Hawk County to go forward, not with a dream, but with the need of our constituents. And I just wanted to echo, if anything, Kevin was being modest. The need is great. And most of us in this room have had, if we're not veterans, we've had family members and loved ones who were veterans. These, these are us, these are our community members. And the more that we can help them be, to be productive, everybody wins because their productivity goes back to Black Hawk County's population and, and just the place where we're proud to live and work and play and pray. So thank you. Kevin, I do have one more question. Do we have 99 counties of veteran directors or I thought some were combined? No, it's 99. Do we see people from Bremer? Mm -hmm. uh, we see veterans from 37 counties. 37 counties. Bremer's one of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's it amount to like in Bremer County? I mean, they just have a director appointed or do they have workers in an office? And I think in Bremer County they have uh, a director appointed and then I think he has a, uh, I think is it one of his commissioners access to this kind of office person? That's what most of them have, isn't it? Because I knew they, they yeah. come to Blackhawk a lot over the years. That's because we care, and we yeah. really do help them. And in this current age where brick and mortar don't really matter, neither do borders, that's why a regional model actually would save all kinds of money and give better care because we could bunch assets um, and, and put, the, put the people where the work's actually being done. Okay, then. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. Kevin, I do have one question because you're familiar with the building and the, and the site or the location, I guess, for the vet center. You don't have to. I was going to say, would there be a room? You can speak from it from there. I was going to say, would there be a room as it's designed now for that? Yeah, uh, so Rory, 
Dory's already looked at that. Yeah, had an architect come out and mm -hmm. we walked around together and we mapped that out to have a specific room, like the Colonel said, to have a private place. Um, okay. uh, that's part of the plan. I haven't seen the plan nor the architect was also going to put together the, what he believed the funds it would take to do that. I haven't seen that yet. Okay. Well, Rory may have it. I yeah, seen it. I think, and he was out this week, so we didn't get a chance to ask him, but sure, thank you. Okay, then. Well, thank you, everybody, for that. Um, you need a couple of minutes, Susan, to set up? No. Okay, we're going to go to item B. This is discussion, possible board action, considerations of all aspects of the FY20 Blackhawk County budget. Susan, you're on. Abby, can you bring my screen up? I did have the VA budget on the list today because Kevin was going to be here, but it sounds like it might make more sense, Kevin, to wait until Amanda's had a chance to... Um, I don't, I don't know if you, how you feel about that, or whether you want to talk about um, your operating budget today, or, or should we just wait and so that you can, okay. It's, um, yeah. I decreased the budget, basically. Yeah. Our operating expenses, I lowered them. Um, we've done a better job of training our veterans to um, take care of themselves. Um, we don't need as much county taxpayer funds anymore to provide relief assistance to our veterans in this county. Uh, we can direct those funds needed elsewhere. Uh, Stacy, probably one of the best things that ever happened to the Blackhawk County Veterans Affairs Office was Stacy. I think um, people always give me all the credit, but really, I. I don't know where we'd be if Stacy didn't come to that office. Uh, she has the ability, I told this to Amanda, that she takes my ideas from my head and she just brings them to life. Um, but she's done a good job of working with our veterans of, but they don't need to come in as much for utilities and rent and things like that. They come in one time, she gets them on a plan uh, and gets them on their own. So we, we just, um, Take those funds and use them elsewhere you need it. We, we're we taking care of the veterans. We were getting a yearly grant. Are we still getting that? Um, uh, I re we don't know yet. The legislature hasn't moved on it yet. We normally get $10,000 every year. I, I asked the lady who oversees it in Des Moines last week, and she says, Kevin, the legislature hasn't decided yet. We just don't know. They, may, they talk about that every year for the last 10 years. I know uh, last year uh, they wanted to cut it in half, but a number of... VA directors around the state yelled and screamed, and I, I, I have my own opinion on that. Um, I don't, uh, I don't need the state's money to, uh, yeah. to do what we need to do. We, as you guys know, we're veterans. We take care of our own. Whether you give us a dime or a dollar or anything, we we just take care of each other. So I don't know if we'll get it. Uh, we probably will, but I don't know. But you can see we we lowered our operating expenses. Um, uh, I, I think if, I have, if, if God would have allowed me to stay here another year, uh, I think we'd have reduced them even more. Um, but uh, I don't, it's, there's not much to it. I think you've reduced them each year for the last since you've been here. Yeah, I think this year, if my math is correct, uh, which a lot of times I gotta get Stacy to help me now with my math, um, I, I think we'll have, and still take care of our veterans even more than we ever did before. I think we'll probably give back to the county about sixty-five, sixty-eight thousand dollars this year. It's Forty thousand the first year. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, but each year as our veterans get off this idea of needing our assistance, um, it, it'll go down. It'll go down. Um, some counties don't even have relief assistance, um, uh, but our county's different. We we have that population that. Uh, we still have to do it, uh, but it, it's getting, um, and Michelle too, Stacy and Michelle both done a good job of educating our veterans and helping them to get off that idea of, uh, of this handout instead of a handout. So, but like I said, there's not much to our budget. It's pretty simple. Um, uh, not asking for anything, actually giving some back. Um, but, uh, like Susan said, I, I, my prayer and my my hope and uh, is um, 
that'll change a little bit to um, for um, the job classification changes for Stacey Michelle and maybe adding one more person. I, I, I tell you, to be honest with you, I, I struggled hard with this um, because uh, I try to be a good steward of the county taxpayer's money and I fought with this for a year. Um, whether having another person would, would be wise with the county's money, uh, would they be busy enough, would there be a return on that investment? I struggle with the job classifications. Um, are we being good stewards? And because um, and, I thought about bringing this a long time ago, but I just wasn't sure. But I, I'm sure today, I, I know that our office will continue to move. It'll get busier and busier. More counties will keep coming here, and, and they deserve it. Um, so um, that's why I wanted to bring the job classifications to you. But as far as the operating expenses, uh, if, if I was here another year, I'd go down next year. Not much to it. And if there's something else changed between now and next week when we talk about it again, we can address it then. We can bring it back up. Um, and just one other thing, in FY19, <clears throat> we included in the budget, we included um, approximately 20,000 in donation revenue. Uh, and then we had, we included about 4,800 for the, for the state funds, um, that is typically 10,000, but we had thought at the time it was gonna go down. Uh, we haven't put anything in yet in FY20. Um, for either of those items, but um, we can put those in with offsetting expenditures or we can um, leave those out and, and if we need to do an amendment at some point, we well, can do for, that. For a long time, that was never put in the budget. Right, yeah. You know, I don't think yeah. the office received donations, not to the magnitude we do now. We really receive about yeah. 40000 a year I, in donations. I about that grant. I don't it think they ever included it. No, no. we didn't no, use to include was. the grant. Um, we we did last year just so that we could um, include the offsetting expenditures. And it's not in this year either. We don't have it in this year, and so yeah. really, it, it's uh, the operating expenditures have been reduced about twenty thousand. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Chief. Okay. Is there anything else? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kevin. We'll see you probably next week. Hopefully, if they have that okay. work done, in HR. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Susan, where do you want to go now? Let the record reflect that Supervisor Choke is in the house. But I haven't been released yet. The judge is still holding me, but we're on a break. You didn't do what I told you. I did. It didn't help. It didn't work. <laughs> well, uh, say, you probably sound like Tom Little out there. You're staying. Okay, Susan, where do we want to go now? Uh, we're going to go to the auditor's budget. Okay. And um, This one you got to watch. Uh, I, there really are no changes. Um, I just want to make a uh, couple comments about, uh, as we look at these, um, this is basically just a summary of the, um, of the budget. It shows 17 and 18 actuals, uh, and then a column for what the current 19 budget is, adopted budget, um, the FY20 requested, and then the dollar change between uh, FY20 uh, requested in the 19 adopted budget and the percent change. Um, so it has revenues, um, expenses broken down uh, by classification, salaries and benefits, operating and capital, um, and then at the bottom is the excess revenue over expenditures. Salaries and benefits, I have plugged in 3% on non-bargaining and elected officials, um, and then uh, based on the, um, the uh, information uh, that I received We're, from Debbie. We're still working on that. Right, I plugged in um, s uh, an increase for the, uh, for the bargaining units and then a 5% for health insurance. Um, but as you look at them, you'll see uh, varying increases. So the auditor's office salary and benefits is only uh, a total of 2.35%. And that has to do with changes in employees, uh, changes in the health insurance that the employees are opting for. Um, and so that, that's going to vary, uh, not necessarily going to be that, um, you know, three and a half or four percent or something that it, it. Do you recall we had what, six percent last year for insurance? No, I think we had five percent. I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the auditor's budget, um, uh, aside from salaries and benefits, there's really um, no change, a slight reduction in all that grant. Talk about it. Not much more to say. Uh, Helen Stefan went through uh, all of our budget numbers and, and made some slight changes based on past history. 
Uh, the one thing I will mention is that we are looking at getting a new photocopier. Uh, the one that we're using uh, has some problems that uh, to fix will cost more than is um, worth it. Um, but that will that photocopier, which is used by multiple departments, um, will um, be in the uh, IT budget. Um, so we can talk about it then or or now. But it's um, I think we estimated about um, Billy looking at about twelve thousand mm -hmm. yes. dollars um, for a new copier that's on the order of what we have now. And how, how many departments use that grant? Well, um, it's kind of a in flux sort of a thing, but IT uses it, your office uses it, elections and us and the recorder's office. The big change over the last few years has been uh, the, re the recorder using it. And uh, Sandy's here, and uh, maybe she can give you a rundown of, of why uh, they started using our machine. <laughs> Sandy, did you want to discuss that, yes. that development? It's quite an interesting one. Good morning, Mark. Morning. 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 Actually, our project, we've been working with a company out of Florida to record documents, and then they request certified copies of these documents. And it's a big project. We don't, it's not a set schedule. It's just when they need documents recorded, they'll record them, and then they'll request copies. We, uh, at this point in this fiscal, I think we're at $50,000 in copy fees. So it just, it's hit and miss. We don't know when they're going to have these requests. Grant's copier is quicker than ours. It, it has staples. So we've looked at possibly getting our own copy machine as well. But that is um, probably weekly we've been using it the last few months. When you say weekly, once a week or? Oh, if we get a request, it will take us the whole week to copy the request. Okay. They want hundreds of copies. Mm -hmm. And they're multiple pages. They can be anywhere from 5 to 11 pages per document. So this one gets used quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. How old is it, Grant? Mm -hmm. How old is it? They really, like they, you really don't last that long when they're used. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's all and, relative. I mean, and it's color too, right? No, it, it is not oh, color. Not. We could throw that in for probably a couple thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when we get to IT, then we'll have further discussion. Okay. Um, then should we go to elections? Yeah. So, uh, did you want to make some general remarks about elections? No. I'll okay. Uh, elections is much the same, not much change except for one big difference. Uh, we're looking for some new equipment. Uh, the uh, laptops that we use for the uh, Precinct Atlas uh, poll book system at the polling places, uh, we have different ages of them with different operating systems. And um, we looked at upgrading some of them, and it didn't work out as well as we had hoped. And, and Karen can give you better details on that. But we're looking to replace a number of laptops. Uh, I haven't got my papers out yet. Are we using them? Yes, we're using them. Uh, so uh, about $25,000 for new laptops. And also we want to um, replace, there's, we use two types of printers for uh, the documents that get printed at the polling place. One type is a label printer that we have to put on forms, and the other type uh, is a, uh, a laser printer that um, uh, prints out the whole form, which is much more uh, effective and causes less problems and confusion. And so we want to replace the uh, the old Dymo label printers with HP printers uh, for a total of fifty-five thousand. So overall, with the laptops and the HP printers, um, an eighty thousand dollar request for for equipment. And um, they're in the Karen, IT budget. No, they are not. They're in our budget. And Karen can give a uh, better explanation of that if you need more explanation. How many? How many is that, Karen? Good morning. Karen Schulwalter, Elections Manager. Um, 
exactly what Grant said. We, um, I guess one thing I want to go back and talk about the electronic poll books is we do probably now that we have 30 left to replace out of our 214. Um, those would be the oldest ones. And so moving forward, I think we have to decide, are we going to cycle these through every five years, ask for one big request to replace all of them at the same time? So that's neither here or now, but something that should get put on the radar because after these 30 that are replaced, then they'll be all up and current. And so we won't have to put another request certainly in the next year to three, four years to upgrade those laptops again. I will say that they'll all be at Windows 10 and those will be supported through 2025. So just thinking long-term on that. As far as the HP printers to replace those Dymo um, label printers, we train and train and train our poll workers. And I guess considering that the age and pool of our poll workers um, there's still mistakes happening at the polling location that I would like to um, prevent, and that is them not knowing where to put these labels on the forms or using the wrong forms to process voters. If we move all to HP printers, then the forms are printed out just on the generic white paper, so there's no confusion. We do spend about $5,000 every election just on forms and labels, so we can get rid of that expense, which I get we're doing the HP printers, but long term will recoup that expense um, and also prevent having these issues that we do at the polling location. To answer your question, Craig, we would need 120 HP printers. We have um, usually three stations set up at each polling location. Each one has its own electronic pull book and printer, which we're using the two Dymo printers right now. I will also say just um, now serving on the precinct atlas board at the statewide level, we're one of the very few counties that still use label printers. And I can tell you the programmers for precinct atlas are trying to get away from using label printers. So I think down the road that will be forced upon us as well. Is everybody else using electronic? Um, yes, there was a change. That's the other thing. There was the big change into election law with this um, last bill that all counties that did, it didn't require you to use electronic poll books, but if you were not using them, then every election day registration had to be a provisional. So this will give us a total of how many? We, we are at capacity with our laptops. We just have some that are dated back to 2012, 30 of them left that we would like to cycle in. So it's 214 electronic poll so books 30 that we we're have. Gonna recycle. What's wrong with them? There's nothing really wrong with them. It's just um, we upgraded them to Windows 10, so they're at Windows 10, so they can work. There's just some programming glitches that we get a lot of calls on Election Day about, whether there's an exception rule that comes out. I mean, we can work with them, um, but it's not ideal, especially, again, I mean, on average, our poll workers are 70-plus, so... Um, well, it's easy for us to work around them. It causes them a little panic on election day. And the, out of this capital request, the electronic pull book cost, as Grant mentioned, the 25,000 is the smaller portion of replacing these printers with HP printers. But that is a question that our office you guys certainly, Susan, are just going to have to figure out how do we, do you want us to come back in seven or eight years with a full, you know, to replacing 214 laptops? Do we start cycling them out so it's not as big of a request? Um, that's just something that we definitely should probably think about. But we're going to be using it from here on out for sure. Yes. And then it also, we sometimes are forced to replace them when the operating system does not is not no longer compatible with precinct atlas and we're forced to upgrade upgrade the operating system but they're all now current yes i don't know it's a decision we don't need to make now but yeah it's really just an effort to get the cycle done um so that we're not making if we had to make a request for 214 laptops at one budget hearing like this i think that would not be ideal, I don't, <laughs> for me or for you. Mm -hmm. 
but I'd like to try to see us do that every five years over a five year period. So it doesn't seem like such a huge hit. Lori, anybody got any questions? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And excuse me, I need to go back up to the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we can get something done. <laughs> okay, what do we got next, Susan? Um, 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 just on Karen's um, point about putting them on a, re a replacement cycle, one of the options, one of the things we can do, we do have um, in our capital projects funds, we have, we set up the technology fund uh, where we put in our reserves that we had um, allocated for the tax administration software. Um, so we have those funds and we have a fund set up for that. Um, but as we're looking at these technology needs and planning out uh, for the next, you know, five or, or however many years, um, and if we have things like this that are that are going to be a, a major expense at, at, and hit in one year, you could transfer funds into that, allocate funds every year to that technology fund, so that when the year comes that you want to replace, you know, X amount in one year, you can pull that out of the capital projects fund instead of having it hit the budget in that one year. So that I just wanted to put that out there as a Suggestion the only thing for I can how we see can. there on a lean year, you're going to have a board. It could be this board is going to take that money, even though it's not designated for that project. They're going to take it because they need it elsewhere. So that's a risk that you're going to have to. I understand what you're trying to do. Right. You're tr trying to do it not only in electronic but also in capital improvements. Right, right. But yeah, if it comes crunch time and they need that money, they'll get it right out of there. But we did talk about that. I think we talked. So better to have it there in the first place, though. Yeah. Well, depends. But we've had it. I think we've talked about it every year for several years. So yeah, thought we weren't using it like we intended yeah. anyway. So. Right. Right. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Debbie, do you want to go next? <laughs> On an alphabetical order. Uh, so we'll take a look at HR. Um, Um, much it was down too. HR, uh, there's actually been reductions again. The salaries and benefits, um, you know, it just depends on uh, sometimes the employees and, and what um, health insurance options they've chosen and so forth. Um, this year we are, I am allocating about uh, $4,300 out of the salaries and benefits for HR. Um, to civil service because Amanda is going to be doing, uh, fulfilling those duties um, and she will be charging her time to civil service when she does that. So um, it's about the same amount um, that we had allocated in the budget for Chris Ping, but I am just shifting it out of HR uh, and into civil service. So um, Debbie, I'll, I'll let you talk about operating expenses. That's really just for accounting purposes. Right. And show where mm -hmm. differences. Yeah. Right. And then uh, basically, the only thing I really changed in my budget was I eliminated the uh, eleven thousand dollars for uh, the consultant for OSHA. Yeah. Just determined we didn't really need that. I took a thousand of that though, and I did add it to training because training is always important and getting quality speakers is expensive. Um, with the last couple of years, we haven't been able to focus on that as much as we'd like to. We've been pretty much treading water. Um, hopefully, now we can. Uh, move into areas where we've not been able to in the past. Okay. With the loss, of, how many employees are we down now that up from country? To you? Fifty, I believe. I'd have to do a count, but uh, the health department probably two hundred people down. I mean, I yeah, I mean, I can roughly. do a termination report and see, but yeah, we we've lost several people. Obviously, um, it's been it's taken a lot of our time over the last year. Um, but we still have, we still provide the same services to people that are here. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions? Susan. Um, I do, I did include the civil service budget and I have, I didn't change operating expenses and I just allocated that. So I'm not sure if we want to. It all depends on if they meet X yeah. amount of times. Okay. Um, 
Uh, Sandy, do you want to go? Um, so we'll do the recorders next. And uh, we did have a, a, a decrease in revenue, um, and basically um, due to um, uh, the boat fees are on a three-year cycle. Uh, I think this is the uh, year for that. Uh, so that was a slight reduction. And then also um, we haven't in the past, you can see our actual revenues. Uh, we just haven't met uh, what we have been budgeting in revenues. And so uh, Sandy and I talked and, and we just reduced uh, that uh, revenue slightly. Um, there is a potential increase and I'll let Sandy talk about it in this um, recording uh, fee revenue. And so we didn't reduce it as much as if you look at the FY17 and 18 actuals um, where we haven't been meeting um, what we've been budgeting there. And then um, the operating expenses is just a, another slight reduction due to the cycle of the uh, boat fee uh, registration. So I'll let Sandy talk about. Real quick, Susan, <coughs> now that you bring that up. Mm -hmm. uh, FY19, the end of the fiscal year, was there other than Sandy's, was there very many departments that missed their revenue mark? Um, I, I, I'd have to go back and look at that. Um, I don't think there were. The sheriff, maybe, I can't remember. Um, but I have that information. I'll have to pull it up. Did you get that? Because I think it's important that we keep a handle on the revenues. Yeah, if you have that report from the FY18 uh, that I gave, it had the detail, uh, departmental revenues there, and um, I'll pull that up and okay, look at it. You. But it's in that report, too. Sandy? Yes, a couple things on the revenue that I wanted to highlight. There is a there was a law change we were anticipating the recording fee there's an instrument that we record at no charge the state passed a law that we can start charging for that fee it was supposed to be effective january 1 of 2019 they've pushed it back to july so we've ran the numbers this one document with a fee will bring in about 40 40 to forty eight thousand dollars per year just to record this one document that's effective july 1. our passport fees we haven't quite hit what we projected um, there, those processing fees also were increased in April of 2018, so we will be seeing this first full calendar year of that increase. Our processing fee was increased $10 from 25 to 35 so we're hoping to see that increase. We are attending the passport fairs at UNI. We have one at Mocker Union next week. I'll be sending two passport agents there. We usually get a very good turnout. They have a cultural fair. We have a booth there and we have our agents processing passports. So those are just a couple things. We had a reduction a little bit in our expenses because it is not a boat year as Susan talked about. So I don't have any printing charges and um, postage charges for those. Those were the main changes. But overall, you've been super busy over there from what I, what I see. We are always busy. Basis. You know, there's we're a small staff. People waiting for a marriage license. There's people waiting yes. to have passports. Right. Uh, you know, I don't think people should have to wait that long as, as they do myself. Right. And, you know, some of it, them, that, that lady the other day that stopped me, they had been waiting 45 minutes for their they? passport. Okay. And because we are a small staff, I've talked before, our duties can't be. We, right. They can't be cross-trained. If they process vital records, they can't process passports. So I have to be very careful. That's what in our inspection every year. And if they find that we are, you know, making any errors there, they will take passports from the county. So I have to be very careful. But we're a small office. When I started, we had 15 people. We now are down to nine. And if you haven't had a chance to meet Julie or thank Julie, today is her last day. She will be filing for unemployment tomorrow. She was bumped from the Country View employees. So. So we're dealing with training a new passport agent, which takes a year to two years. So. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move to the treasurer's office. I thought you had a boot on there for a second. What? I thought you had a boot on for a second. Like, <laughs> oh, no. What did you do now? Just sat, sat too long. Yeah. Sat too long. Got to get the motors going again. Um, 
Um, you want me to? Actually, I'm just going to let you go read out. <laughs> Put some notes. Um, Treasurer's office, as far as expenses, we're not increasing anything on the expense end of it uh, as far as office. Revenues, we have seen a nice increase in interest rates. Uh, the last three CDs that we renewed, uh, the last part of the uh, six months of last year, uh, we were at like 1% two years ago, and we all three were over 3%. So that was a, a big... Uh, uh, goal of mine was to see that uh, increase as uh, time goes on. When I first was treasurer, it was like 0.35, and now we're up to 3%. So uh, just the process of the times changing. So. Good job, Rita. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do a thing, but uh, I, I, I can always pray over it all. Makes a difference. Though. <laughs> but anyway, uh, with that, our revenue uh, just in the um, uh, money's coming in, we're going to see 216,000 increase on revenue uh, from last year and um, uh, decrease as far as decrease in revenue. There's only really one uh, item. Uh, our office for like over 15 years has uh, handled uh, the payments, uh, taking them through ACHs through their bank accounts like a mortgage company would. Monthly, we would, uh, Beth would process that with uh, clients that would sign up to this because there was no other way to, um, uh, no other process to do that. So when their uh, escrow was paid, we found that a lot of individuals were not paying their taxes because they never paid them before. And so they were starting to go delinquent, going to tax sale. So about 15 years ago, they, we got a process going that we did like a bank and withdrawn monthly. And the fee was minimal. It was only a dollar a month uh, for them to have this process. Now the uh, uh, treasurer's website provides scheduling payments monthly or weekly even if they want. So we have been slowly uh, moving the clients over to the website so they can manage it themselves. So there was an uh, estimated decrease of 4800 in the revenue that uh, we are going to possibly see. We're going to keep some of them that are the large um, uh, entities that do uh, have multiple parcels uh, till we get up and going with the new tax software, we it would be better to move them at that time. So it'll be another year or so before we're going to get that completely on uh, the uh, Iowa Treasurer's site. So uh, with that, um, and I had talked to Susan about this too, eight years ago we lost, prior to me taking over as Treasurer, we lost four positions in the office due to budget cuts. And, um, and it's been a slight struggle throughout the years. We've made do. Our staff has been wonderful downstairs. Um, but we're in a situation uh, where now uh, DOT is implementing a program that dealers, instead of bringing in the paper or mailing it in, they're going to be sending it electronically. And so that process is going to be more time consuming. Uh, it's right at this time, we're only dealing with two dealers in Des Moines, and they're for new cars only. Uh, they opened it up to get ready for used cars, and they opened the gates for the dealers that wanted to begin this program uh, to sign up. And they had 100 immediately throughout the state of Iowa, so they had to close it down because they were getting too many dealers wanting to do this process. So um, it's a situation where, with it, it's more convenient for the dealers. Um, there's still that time factor of when they need to get it to us and when we have to have it completed. So at this present time, uh, we just have the supervisors and title and registration handling it because of the uh, newness to it. But I foresee um, uh, the paperwork we handle will be handled at least three times for each uh, dealer process. Uh, and we don't get notified that there's a new one in, out there. There's always going to be activity going on ones that have been submitted and also new ones coming in. So uh, at this present time, I foresee that we may have one to two that will be more in tune to doing that daily and uh, because they'll always have to be going out there and checking that record. Uh, I foresee the out-of-county out dealers using this. Um, I know a lot of the Blackhawk County, the larger ones, have signed up to it. But they can send the runners down here, and we can still process it the, uh, with the paperwork in hand. But uh, the out-of-state ones, uh, we're really looking forward to this process so they didn't have to mail, lose it in the mail. Uh, that 
a delay in time if the paperwork was not correct, mailing it back. So it's it's good for the public and too for the dealers, but I see extra work within the treasurer's office handling that uh, to the um, uh, what we need to do to keep it within those timelines. So with that, um, I had talked to Susan about it as to possibly opening another position in our office for office specialists. Right now we have the Crossroads office we, where we have two out there uh, manning that from Tuesday through Friday. We used to be open Saturday morning, but because of uh, the cuts uh, that had to close, and we could have closed it at that time, but it's for customer service. And, and the office... Our office, and the same with Sandy's too, uh, we have a lot of walk-in traffic, a lot of customers that come to the, to the counter. And so um, we uh, trying to, to give them another option with it out at Crossroads. We, we see um, that's still being a, a valued <coughs> process out there. I don't want to close that, but there are days that we do because of shortage of staff, either due to vacation, sickness, funerals, that type of thing. And so we have uh, the past year closed it about two weeks in, 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 um, for, for the year. So, uh, and it's usually spur of the moment uh, if we have some issue that comes up. So um, uh, we have probably out there, we service probably 25,000 individuals per year. DOT loves us out there and um, uh, because out of state people that come in for their driver's license, they refer them over to us as to what to do for the car tri transfers. And so uh, it's a needed thing. So my plans are to keep that going, and whether I can get another staff member or not. Uh, again, it's just for customer service trying to do our best job. Um, What's the hours? The hours out there are uh, 8.30 to 4.30 is what their hours are out at Crossroads. They go in at 8 o'clock. They do still do the 8 to, to 4.30. They go in early, get set up, do title work, because the local dealers out there will take the dealer work down out there instead of bringing it downtown because it's just more convenient for them there. And you got two employees out there? Two employees. Uh, we have tried to do one, but uh, uh, titles, you could spend 15 minutes on an average to longer, and there's only two out there, and if there's only one out there, they're sitting out there with their ticket waiting to get waited on. So. Um, and with this uh, dealer um, process, going to see a change here in the next few months, more increasing to uh, uh, used cars, uh, I foresee it being an issue. And then also downstairs, I have six windows open at the front. And because I have two out at Crossroads, uh, one fills in answering phones, but then goes up front uh, to fill the empty position I have. So um, it's... Uh, Back when I first started, it was over 40 employees. Now we're down to 18. So it's uh, a matter of um, uh, trying to do our best for our customers and service them to the best of our ability, uh, both with property taxes and with car licenses, too. So uh, it's um, just a request. Didn't request it previously because there really wasn't any money in the budget, but now interest rates are increasing. And so I, I would... Um, Ask for this position at this time because of revenues. I'd like up. to see some kind of a track record to see exactly how much you're going to get because right now you're anticipating some of that. As far as for the the, the DOT, so and I the would players. like to see us kind of track that a little bit before and, we actually hire okay. somebody for down there. And that probably won't be in time for this budget then. So it would be that I could present well, it next year then. And it possibly could yeah. be before next year. I yeah. mean, the board's done it. Mm -hmm. So, but I think we need to have some kind of a track record on what that's increasing your volume and so forth, because you just like to record. There's some mm -hmm. days you're busy, and there's other days there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Plus, I think it'll probably take you a while to organize what you want to run it. Right. Uh, the so the forth. dealer uh, right now, like I said, they're just the two dealers for new. But I do know there is testing with other counties that are using doing the uh, used. So when they do switch it, and I'm not sure when that will happen, if it's 1st of July or if it'll be yet this uh, fiscal year as to opening the gates and including the used in that. So that's why I'm kind of presenting it now as kind of a uh, possibility in the future that uh, uh, it's, it may be an issue that it will tie up an employee uh, on a regular basis because you can't. I talked to Monica about it, um, and I had seen the demonstration in that, but she said that uh, once you're in there, you can't really get interrupted. Uh, it's a situation that 
you are, are handling this paperwork from out of state, out of country, whatever, um, and where you had it tangible before, and now it's all electronically, and you can't have uh, be, be uh, interrupted because of the process, because uh, if it's incorrect or whatever, it comes back and haunts us later on. So, um, You know, for years, the theory, update your technology, and it's going to cut back your workload. Mm -hmm. But it seems like more and more we update our technology, but we're increasing the workload. Mm -hmm. so it's this was more the dealer association pushing this because that was easier for them to just scan out the reports and send it on. And we have to find if didn't they sign things? Uh, the Is dealer, that the law? Uh, the law, yeah, that just changed here. So all uh, counties are going to have to. All do this. counties are doing this. Yes, the whole state of Iowa. DOT has been working on this for probably a year and a half, two years, trying to get implemented because they had a deadline with the state that they had to get it up and running. They did, but not to the extent that all the dealers and all the used vehicles and that, because there were glitches. Uh, everything is sent through ACH as far as the monies go. Uh, what they were sending in was incorrect, and so that, again, bounced back to the dealers and, and that feedback back and forth, but just a general transaction is going to be at least three times handling uh, on a on a regular basis, so I, I foresee that being a concern in the future because I'm going to have to have someone really totally look into that and then have a backup to that person if they take off for vacation or sickness. So it's uh, right now I have just the supervisors and title and registration doing it, so uh, they are 100% behind it. And so, uh, but they they had come to me saying it's going to become an issue, and so I just want to bring it out to you that. Uh, uh, that's what I would like, but if not, our staff will do their best. So, Rita, I guess my question is, you're talking about adding an office specialist person, but that wouldn't necessarily be the person that would be doing this work, so the office specialist would assume something. Be doing the work that we would be pulling someone else, mm -hmm. because like Sandy said, uh, training is not a two-week training type thing. Property tax is a whole year process. Title and registration basically is six months to a year because of all the different scenarios uh, that come in. And um, uh, and then trying to pull somebody that has that knowledge, and then trying to get somebody uh, up to par quickly enough. So, and we do have an empty spot at the front line that we could definitely fill with position uh, on a regular basis. That I'd have all six windows open for the customers. And slow the wait time down. And slow the wait time down. Yes. Yes. Just want to. One last thought, you brought it up about with the increase of interest rates, mm -hmm. but we want to be cautious with that because I've seen the time where we we're over a million dollars in interest and dropped to 400, which in turn this board had to increase somewhere, whether it was taxes or whatever. So mm -hmm. just because the interest rates are going up don't mean that it's all spendable there. money. We're trying to get back to where we were right, mm -hmm. uh, not that long ago. And I, I understand and that. And that's when it was really below a percent. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you got to be cautious when mm -hmm. we think that's extra money coming in because it really isn't. Okay. And um, Mr. Little mentioned the fact of seeing some kind of a tracking record or seeing yeah. that work actually created. Once that starts, uh, once they open it to all dealers, then I, I will definitely have a better uh, feedback on that. And yes. Do you have any idea on that timeline, like when you think that would be? Because... They were supposed to be already last year with uh, used cars, and because they had the glitches on the um, uh, process uh, of the online, uh, they didn't. They were going to open it up, and then when they saw the problems, they closed it down. And DOT is very cautious on that because um, they're limited in their em employment there too, and they have a lot of uh, change uh, just recently of positions and. Um, uh, they're just trying to pick up to speed their own knowledge of the job. So I think that kind of slowed the process. But they got it started on time, what was required by law, but then after that it just kind of slowed it down a little bit. So we should have been active at this point, but it could be next week get a notification saying, yep, it's going to be. And, and so it's all DOT driven, which and we don't have much been, control the state's on. state's been known for that. Yeah. <laughs> the attorney went through a new program, and it took forever for that to get going. And I think we're going through that with the engineer's office right now. I mean, they're going electronic on everything, mm -hmm. but sometimes they don't, they don't act like they're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the government is slower. It's, it's yeah. just a slower process than you would in your private. 
Well, I was just thinking if you had some idea in mind, which mm -hmm. you don't, I was putting you on I can I can check with Monica and see if... Because I said maybe that would give you the track record, uh, you know, even in the first six months of the year to know that, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to need somebody, we really could use somebody in January or whatever okay. then. And then you could maybe look as it up. As soon as I find out, I'll let you guys know. Just keep the board abreast yeah, of what's going board. on. Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Anybody else from the board? Okay. Okay, Susan. Thanks. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hmm. Dan's not going to make too much of the budget no. today. <laughs> I said, "Let's look like Dan's going to make it too much of the budget today." Um, well, these uh, are the good ones to go through uh, because they're pretty no, easy. Yeah. I've got the board office budget. Um, really, no change there. Um, I, I just made a, a few minor changes to some of the line items, um, uh, increasing it four hundred dollars. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, the uh, the advertising uh, or the publishing costs is, is really the main thing uh, in the board office budget and it's it's uh, it's been a little high the last couple of years um, and so I did up that a little bit but then I, but then I decreased some other line who knows if we'll get relief this year we've been yeah. yelling about it forever um, then I have board supervision. Um, and I did decrease this a little bit. We um, have been having some savings in our um, uh, insurance. Um, the revenues that are going down is related to um, the utility reimbursement for juvenile detention that is going away. And um, the operating expense is obviously related to Country View. So, um, and, and so that's really the major change there. Um, and really that's I have district court which hasn't changed um, I can bring that up that's a very small budget um, but there really is no change there and their total budget is uh, like 11,900 yeah. um, and that kind of covers all of the smaller uh, offices we're gonna have uh, the conservation department and engineer on Friday, uh, and we have a couple of um, a couple of the agencies coming um, to talk also, and then next Thursday we'll have um, health, the sheriff, the attorney, uh, and a DHS, I believe, and um, possibly community services, um, and then we'll wrap up with maintenance and IT on Tuesday, the 29th, I believe, and then. We're going to have one more meeting to talk about some of the um, salaries, board agencies, and so forth. Sure. What I have. Friday's nine. Friday's at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. Hey, board, you got anything? Anything else? Just send out our condolences to the Kevin family for their loss of his mother. Okay. Anything else, Susan, or is that it until Friday? Motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, I had to miss a budget meeting today. Because the other one was.